In this video, let us set up an interactive system to control the position of a stepper motor. We are using two of our products, Automator Interactive, which is our PC application software with visualization tools, and T7000P, which is our signal generation and acquisition hardware. Here is a preview of this demo. Based on the control pattern specified on this grid widget, the stepper motor moves forward or backward. Note that the purpose of this video is only to demonstrate the usage of our products. In case you are new to our products, please visit our website for more details. Let us get started with the high-level connection diagram of this demo. Here is the stepper motor. And this is T7000P which is connected to the PC with Automator via Ethernet. Here we use A4988 stepper motor driver module for controlling the stepper motor. The driver board needs 12 volts and 5 volts. These are provided by DC-DC buck regulators. And it also requires two signals, step and dir, for controlling the stepper motor position one for incremental steps and the other one for the direction of the motor. These two signals are connected to A01 and P01 respectively. The outputs of the driver module are connected to the stepper motor. Here is the actual setup. This is the stepper motor. And this is A4988 driver module. This red wire is the 5 volt line coming from a DC DC buck regulator. And this black wire is the ground. This yellow wire is VSIS, which is converted to 12 volts with this DC DC buck regulator. This orange wire carries 12 volts. These two blue wires are pulse signals. As explained in the connection diagram, they are connected to A01 and P01 of T7000P. These four wires from the driver module are connected to the stepper motor connector. T7000P is connected to the PC using Ethernet. Next, let us set up an automator interactive project. Here, the device T7000P is already added and is set online. Unlock the project to add the widgets. Now, open the widget tree. Drag and drop a SIGGEN type B widget and a pulse out widget. Reposition and resize as needed. Lock the project. For both the widgets, select the device to which the widget events need to be directed. For SIGGEN type B widget, set the channel as per the connection diagram explained earlier. Fill in a pattern for generating a single pulse. At every low to high transition, the stepper motor moves by one step. Note that the width of the pulse is not important. Enter the iterations count for this pulse generation. This count determines the number of motor steps. For pulse out widget, set the channel as per the connection diagram explained earlier. The frequency is not relevant, so let us leave it at 20 Hz. The default duty cycle can be left at 0. 0% 0 duty cycle at P01 makes motor run in one direction, and 100% duty cycle makes it run in the other direction. We are ready to control the motor. Now, turn on the widgets. As expected, the stepper motor moved by 10 steps in forward direction. The oscilloscope capture also shows 10 pulses on A01. Turn off the widget and change the iterations to 5. Repeat the test. 
This time the stepper motor moved by 5 steps. Next, let us change the direction of the motor movement. Set the duty cycle of P01 to 100%. Again turn on both the widgets. And see the motor rotating in the opposite direction. So, we achieved the goal of controlling the motor steps and direction. Now, let us make the interface more user-friendly. Into the page, drag and drop a grid widget for controlling the motor and a button widget for enabling the grid widget. For both the widgets, select the device to which the widget events need to be directed. Right-click and configure the grid widget. Let us set up this grid widget such a way that the first column determines the direction and the next column determines the steps. For each row, fill in the direction and the steps. A plus 1 is for forward direction and minus 1 for reverse direction. The interface file code is written such a way that it executes the rows one after another. Right-click and configure button widget to display appropriate text. When user clicks on the button widget, the information in the grid widget gets processed by the device interface file. The Python code in the interface file interprets the contents of the grid and commands corresponding signals through A01 and P01. With this code in place, we can now test the functionality. The motor does move, as specified, in the grid widget. Let us repeat this with a different set of values. The motor does move, as specified, in the grid widget. This completes our demo. Hope you enjoyed this video. Setting up an interactive system or a full automation system is very easy and affordable with our products. We do have plenty of other example videos on the usage of our products. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit us at www.techsarsystems.com or contact us through phone or email.